So welcome to video problem 20 where we investigate a two-wire transmission line and we determine its inductance by the magnetic flux approach. This is the configuration of our two-wire transmission line. It consists of two infinitely long and parallel wires that we have sketched on the figure here. The wires uh, are of a circular cross-section and they have radius uh, denoted by A. The axes of these wires are separated by the distance D and each of the wires uh, carries a current I which is uniformly distributed over the cross-section of the wires. All materials in question are non-magnetic with free space permeability mu naught, so that we have this simple relationship over here between uh, the magnetic flux density and the magnetic field intensity. We introduce a rectangular XYZ coordinate system as shown on the figure to the right, so that our uh, two wires are infinitely long along Z direction. To this system, we introduce also uh, the associated uh, cylindrical, circular cylindrical RFIZ coordinate system. We remind that we would like to determine the total inductance of our two-wire line and this inductance will have two contributions. One is called internal inductance uh, and the other one is uh, called external inductance. The internal inductance is essentially due to the magnetic field interior uh, to our uh, two wires over here. And from video problem 19, uh, we can recall that if we have a wire or a conductor that has a non-zero thickness and carries a uniform current, its internal inductance will always be given by the expression here. Now, in the present case, we have two such conductors. They have uh, or they share the same current, so our, our wires are in a serious connection, so that the internal inductance of our configuration here is actually twice the value over there. So our internal inductance per unit length is given by the expression here. In order to determine the external inductance, we have to use the field between the wires and we have to find actually uh, the magnetic flux, which is enclosed uh, by this current that is flowing in these two wires. And the field is uh, illustrated by a few field lines over here uh, that you can see uh, from the first wire and from the second wire and uh, these uh, B fields will actually give rise to a magnetic flux through this surface uh, over here S between our wires. So we would have to determine the magnetic flux through this surface in order to be able to determine the external inductance of our configuration. So let's try first to determine uh, the total field between the wires if we only consider uh, wire uh, 1, which is uh, the wire here. This is essentially a volume current density configuration that we have considered in video problem 13. When this wire is alone uh, in uh, free space, we have determined in this video problem over here uh, the external field uh, for this current uh, configuration. And a similar field will actually result from the second wire when it's located alone in free space. Now in the present case, uh, we have the total field between our two wires as uh, being given uh, by the superposition of these two fields. The flux through this surface is this surface integral that you can see here, where the S is uh, our vectorial surface differential area given by the expression here. In this integration surface, uh, our uh, radial coordinate is actually equal to our X coordinate, so that the B field will be a function of X. Now we note also that our surface integral that you can see here will actually be a line integral because our uh, wires are infinitely long in Z direction. Uh, so we will actually only determine flux per unit length by integrating this total field from this point uh, to that particular point over here. So this would essentially be an integral that is indicated uh, over there 
where this is uh, the L element on that particular integration path. So let's try to proceed now. Uh, this is the total B field. Uh, here we have the field from the first wire. Here we have the field from the second wire. And this is the field that you will have to plug into this expression for the magnetic flux per unit length. If you do this, you will be able to convince yourself that this magnetic flux, uh, which is linked by the current uh, in these uh, two wires uh, externally, is given uh, by the expression shown here. And if we divide this flux with the current, we arrive finally at the expression for the external inductance of our two wire transmission line. So, in summary, uh, we obtain uh, the total inductance of our two-wire transmission line, which is composed of two contributions. The first one is the internal inductance, and the second one is the external inductance that you can see over there. So this essentially brings us to the end of this video problem. You can again see uh, the main result uh, on this slide, and as usual, we have a few tasks for you. Please carry out the integrations from the previous slide which are necessary to determine the magnetic flux per unit length. Explain physically why the external inductance, which is the term that you can see here, increases as this separation distance between the wires also increase. Also explain why the external inductance is zero when the separation distance is twice the radius of the wire. Thank you very much for your attention.